to provide our next action are single-minded in their ambitions, promotion to the First Division. And that's why yesterday's meeting at Craven Cottage was so special. Your commentator, Barry Davis. A familiar scene for Fulham regulars, but I wonder how many of them know that on their way to the ground they passed the first home of the local boy who made good. Because at number 33 Finlay Street, 33 years ago next Friday, was born the team's manager, Malcolm McDonald's. Already with a considerable part in the folklore at Craven Cottage, and now trying to lead them back to the first division after an absence of 15 years. And for this vital top of the table match, he's got a full strength side. The stomach bug, which has worried a number of players, has in every case cleared up. And also Dean Coney, who's been troubled by a knee injury, is fit and plays. Wolves are also at full strength, welcoming back from injury Mick Matthews. And the one unfamiliar name, perhaps, Gordon Smith at number four, is now back in the side. He was signed from Tottenham Hotspur in the close season. Fulham in white, Wolverhampton Wanderers in old gold. Fulham attacking the goal to our left. It's a contest between the two top scorers in the second division. Fulham with 42 goals, Wolves with 40. And a match which promises a considerable contrast of styles. First free kick taken by Tony Gale. Here's Lewington. An offside verdict against Gordon Davis. 15 goals he has already. The manager has set him a target for the season of 25. It's John Burridge. And getting a feel of the ball at the other end is the Fulham goalkeeper, Jerry Payton. Finds Davis, Sean O'Driscoll, trying to get a long way around. Houghton. Lock. Houghton again. Oh, he turned so well, and Tony deliberately left it. But it didn't fall for Robert Wilson. And this is a very useful young Scott. Tony Gale. Maybe he didn't know that his colleague was going to win it. Lewington. Oh, it runs to Davis and it should never have been allowed to. And here's Tony with Fender struggling to get back. Three against three in the middle. And one of them is Houghton. And it was John Humphrey who ended the danger, temporarily at least. Ends with a corner, conceded by Gordon Smith. First corner of the match. Hopkins on the near post, Scale just behind him, Brown just behind him. Punch was a bit down, and Wayne Clark was there first. Gail. Wilson to Davis. No support on the right, and he wanted somebody. He's got to do it alone. He went back into the crowd. He virtually had to. Handball by Kevin Locke. Now, what's he going to do about that? Because is he going to see that as deliberately denying a goal-scoring opportunity? And there's a third pass in the crowd. There was a player moving behind him who might have collected and had a shot at goal. Takes the name. It's 
been placed on one of the green lines of the rugby league game. Gray lets it go, comes to Matthews. Pinder! Oh, I say, what a nice goal. Really beautifully worked. Really delightful the scorer. And not surprisingly, because that's the first senior goal he scored for the club. But also delight surely on the bench because that is practice and training in the week that has worked out for perfection in a match. Twenty-seven minutes gone, and Wolves have the lead. It's Tony Gale, Ray Lewington, too high and wide. that words need to be put down on paper. Six Fulham players in or around the box. That's Roger Brown. Tim Barron. And there is number two. Lock. A bit of a breeze blowing up. As you can see them on the board curl to Kevin Lock. This is Gordon Davis on the deck against God. Not enough power in the shot. Tension was clear enough, but Barry took plenty of time to pop and slip across his goal. Stretched by Dodd. Brown. Gale. Lewington. Lock. Gale. Nice. Smith who turned it away. Only the second corner of the contest so far. And both have been conceded by Smith, and therefore both have gone to Fulham. Barrett's got the hook. Houghton. And the linesman flagging, suggesting handball. I could only think that, I must say, I didn't see the handball by Palmer. But the linesman flag, well, to be fair, the sequence was a shout from the crowd. And the linesman flagging, and I must say, my view of that suggests that that was a very harsh decision. The ball has been unpredictable in its bounce on an unpredictable pitch, and I think that is very rough on the wall skipper. And Lewington will take it. Lewington against Barrage. Lewington gets the second bite, and it's one all. But the luck there on two counts, certainly with the home side. The first penalty 
or rather the original shot really wasn't a particularly good one Farage able to parry but Lewington was the clear favourite to get there first to the rebound so with seven minutes to go to half time it's all even again at 1-1 one -one. and here's Gray that's a good challenge by Brown go kick Davis and we end the trip by Pender on Kearney and the referee has words with Mr Smith taken by Gale that's Brown and that's in Looper off the back of Brown's head, but it isn't going to count because the referee right on the spot spotted somebody presumably in an offside position, and John Barrett can feel very relieved because he got himself a little disorientated then. And again, he feels that the point might be made that. Uh, the goalkeeper and the header from Brown were well, the only two people really involved in that. Clark, just a minute left of the first half. It's beautifully laid off for Palmer. Pity he didn't match it, but he's got a corner. Curling, and it was out by Coney, back by Matthews, and picked in by Wayne Clark. Goalkeeper, a little unfortunately, well to get a hand to that at all. Oh. Wayne Clark reacting really well to put his side balls ahead at 2-1 against the side for whom his brother Alan used to start. Distinctive reaction by the goal scorer. Wolves back the lead. Brown. And the end of a half which started rather coldly but certainly ended with considerable warmth and a 2-1 lead for Wolverhampton Wanderers. The pick of the three goals, certainly at the set piece, the goal scored by Pender. Lewington equalising from the penalty spot and Wayne Clark claiming the goal, which puts the Midland side in front at the halfway point. Well, certainly plenty of talking points for the crowd at half-time and away now we go on the second half <laughs> the late challenge by Palmer and the free kick has been given Out. And pulled away from his man well. Here's Davis. Clark looking for the nod on. Gray who made one from a pretty prone position. Matthews. A real struggle. A bit disappointed he was being strongly pursued from behind by O'Driscoll. Certainly an escape for the goalkeeper. He wasn't quite where he wanted to be. 
Hibbert. Did it well, did Roger Brown. Did a curl on the pass from Hibbert. Since we're in a crucial stage of the match. Hibbert. Stretch again by Kevin Locke. But there's a gap on his flank. This is Eves. Brown. Chase for Houghton. Gordon Smith with him. Van Kahn, Nicol Davis. Tony. Davis. Lewington in the middle. But no one for the rebound. Brown, Hopkins, Fulham keeping up the pressure, O'Driscoll, oh, he did well, he did very well, Houghton, Hopkins, the crowd sensing a breakthrough. Five minutes remaining. Here's Lewington. Here's Locke. Davis with Dodd. And foul by him. And the referee wishes to talk to Dodd. And the book is in hand. Third booking, Lock, Humphrey, and now Dodd. Brown! Oh, what a save by Burridge! Marvellous drop. And was right up on the bar. The header was of considerable power, and I suspect spinning away. And he really did well with keeper. Lewington they haven't really come out together. And it reaches Wilson. Faced by Matthews. O'Driscoll. Corner. And really has to admire both the way Wolves are defending and the way that Fulham keep trying to play the ball through. The question of Crashing it up and chasing, trying to control it. That's curling, and O'Driscoll! Oh, what an opportunity wasted. Free header from a player unmarked, and Burridge should have not have been allowed to have smelt that. Hopkins, another telegraph the intention. Humphrey, Dodd, Tony Gale, very much in the Bobby Moore mould, does like to play it at the back and occasionally gets himself into trouble as a result, but a player of some quality. Clark. Corner. Dodd has stayed forward in the position he took right at the start. This piece of uh, Wolves ascendancy. Then it's hit. Oh, and that's the gift. Melives arrives in the middle of the six-yard box. 
Tierney carves an opening and knocks it in unmolested. So in the 78th minute, Wolves have real breathing space. And that's the scorer's fifth goal in the last six matches. His opportunity, whereas the player who played the ball forward then, O'Driscoll, did not. Hopkins. Good head up by Wilson. Here's Davis. Tony stabbed at it with his right and maybe he made the wrong choice. Referee just playing the odd stoppage time. We haven't had a trainer on the field throughout the 90 minutes. Been that sort of game. Players have battled hard but have got up from every challenge and continued immediately. Go kick. Opportunities. It might have been different, but for two incidents in the middle of the second half, a magnificent save by John Barrage from a header by Brown, and then O'Driscoll missing an open goal. In a not dissimilar opportunity, Meleves made sure that his went in. And in the final analysis, football matches are decided by taking the chances. And Wolves gain three more points from a 3-1 victory. Well, I suppose that match could have gone either way, but Wolves' blend of youth and experience, with more than a dash of determination, was better suited to the condition than Fulham's slick, short-passing style. There was such a harsh reaction last time I mentioned Fulham's pitch, I hesitate to grasp that nettle again. But since Malcolm McDonald announced yesterday that Fulham, enterprisingly, are to install the league's first grass cell system pitch for the start of next season, perhaps I dare. Malcolm's problem is to stick to his first-time passing style at home, which I and many others thoroughly enjoy, or compromise his beliefs and win promotion points somehow. It'll help if supporters understand that problem. Lastly, Craven Cottage lived up to its reputation as a fun place to go when after Fulham had been given a penalty for handball, awarded single-mindedly by a linesman, a strong Fulham voice behind me thundered, Happy New Year, linesman! <laughs> Well, by the way, uh, that Wolves performance, judged by Bobby Robson and others as the best of the week, will win for a local boys' club £500 under the new Fiat Fleecer scheme, which began yesterday.